Oh, hey guys, let's finish that texture that we've been working on in the past couple of tutorials. So basically we've got all the artwork created and all of the creative part is over, so to speak, but there's a critical part that we have left and that is figuring out how to format it and export it properly so that it'll work in the game that we want to work in. So there's a couple of things to consider. The first thing is, if you want this to be an additive texture, then you're already done. What is an additive texture, you might ask? Well, I'll explain it. So, I've talked about this before in some of my uh, breakdowns that I've done in 3D, but real quick to explain additive. If you have a lens, let's say the lens is tinted, I don't know, purple, for example, and you put that lens over a piece of paper with a drawing on it, it's just a black and white drawing, then the drawing is going to look purple if you're looking through that lens, right? And it's probably going to be darkened a bit because, you know, the purple in the lens is a little darker. But then, if you were to take the lens and move it back away from the drawing a little bit and then shine a light through the lens onto the black and white drawing again, the drawing would be purple, but it would be lit up with purple. It would be a brighter color, but also purple. And that's what we think of as additive. So right here, you can think of this texture as being additive. That means that these black areas here will not add anything, or if they're slightly tinted, remember we had just a little bit of, of gray, you can see here, it'll just slightly add a little bit of color in these areas, right? but really not much that it's highly noticeable. But then in these areas here, where it's more of like a, a solid, brighter color, it will add a lot of color, uh, approaching sort of a whiter, brighter look. And with additive textures, you generally want to tone down your whites. You remember in the other tutorial I mentioned how these large areas of white can be problematic because they'll kind of blow out and just be really eye-catching in a way that you don't want them to be. So if I were to really polish this texture, I would probably knock down these white areas quite a bit more, if this, especially if it were an additive texture. So the thing about additive is you don't need any transparency. It just adds whatever color there is, or if it's black, then it doesn't add, and that just means that it's more transparent, actually, wherever there's black is essentially a, a transparent area. But what if you just want it normal. Uh, we call this um, alpha blend or just regular blend mode where you you want what you see is what you get. You want these colors to be more like dark and shadowy and blend in. Okay, so that's all been prefaced. Now we're going to talk about how to actually set that up. So the goal is to create transparency like this. I'm just hiding the black layer right here, but I don't want things to go back to blue. You'll see my gradient map here, it fades it to blue. Um, and then because it's only working with white, remember I only painted white on this layer, this gradient map says, okay, whites are this highlight blue color. There are no darker colors, so it's not fading off around those edges to those darker colors. Well, I'll show you how to do that. So um, to reduce confusion, I'll hide the gradient map so you can see what I'm doing. If I click on a layer, like the top layer, and then I hold shift, and then I click on the bottom one, you'll see it'll select multiple layers, like so. And I don't want the wisps copy. We'll drag that down so it's out of the way, okay? I can also hold control and click one at a time to select all the layers I want. And then I want to drag all three of these layers down to create new layer. And now, with them still selected, I'm going to hit control E, which is the same as doing layer uh, merge layers, control E right there. So that's going to turn them into one flat layer. So you see right here in the preview now, we've got the blacks and the whites all mashed together. Now I'm going to use this as essentially a, what we call a, a mask. So I'm going to hit control A and copy it and then hide it. And then let's see. Hmm. You know what? I'm also going to keep it. Yes, I'm going to turn back on this. This is how I'm going to do it. Okay. 
So now I'm going to come down here and I'm going to click this mask button, the rectangle with the hole in the middle of it. And then you can see that it added a new thing in my channels window. So if you don't have the channels window, you can go to window uh, channels. And you'll see here it's got the red, green, and blue channels. It's just showing you like how much red is there, how much green is there, and how much blue is there. And then this channel here, you have to actually unhide it so you can edit on it. And right now, I'm this is a little confusing, so I apologize. But it took me a while to figure it out, and I had to figure it out on my own. So hopefully you don't have to struggle like I did. I'm on this layer here, but you can see that it's got the mask selected on that layer, and that is up here. So the point is, I'm not exactly on a layer so much as I am on the mask. Like, if I click here, the mask goes away in my channels. See that? So these other layers don't have masks on them, but this guy does. So when I click on this guy, it shows up again. I have to unhide it. And then if I hit Control shift v remember I had... Oh. Control shift v There we go. I don't know why... I, I did something wrong. <sighs> Who knows? Okay. So the red on there shows up because that's the color of the alpha. If you double click up here on your mask, you can change it to black. So it's a little less confusing for me, at least. Yeah, you can just double click on that picture there and it changes it. Anyway, so I'm still on the mask, which is why it's still showing up the way it is. But if I click back down here now, I can hide these other layers. And you see, I now have this layer fading off to purple as it fades away. So it's blue in the center and purple around the edges. And I am now ready for export. Now you may be working with a game engine that uses like, I don't know, maybe TIFFs or like PNGs or another type of, of um, image format. You might be working with an engine that also has um, an alpha channel support. So we have red, green, and blue up here, right? But sometimes, I'll hide this guy. So this would export, let me finish here. This would export really nicely to like a PNG or like a, a TIFF, I believe. It'll work for a TIFF as well. Um, you just like do Control Shift S to save as. Don't save it as a Photoshop file, but you can save it as like a PNG, like a TIFF, that kind of thing. But if you want to save it as a different format, like oh, say a DDS, for example, that uses an alpha channel, you can do another way. And if you're not worried about an alpha channel, you can skip this part, but this is kind of a fun little trick. So you can come down here and do shift select on these guys and duplicate them out again like that. Merge them together just like we did before. So now we have this black and white grayscale thing. You can actually come up here and when you click create new, it already knows that you want an alpha channel because it's already got red, green, and blue. And then it knows, well, the next one must be an alpha channel. If you click it again, it'll create another alpha channel. And it, you can just keep creating alpha channels. What is an alpha channel, you might ask? Glad you asked. If I copy this and I paste it there. The alpha channel is basically the data of what's transparent and what's not. So like I said, not every image format supports an alpha channel. So you might have an alpha channel up here and you go and save like a PNG or something. And it'll just be solid. It won't have any transparency. Um, but other image formats work really well with it. And so what's fun about an alpha channel is like I can come in here and now that I've got this guy, I can like set my brush to whatever, right? And I can erase out wisps like this and it won't match my color channel, right? And so I can do all the same things on my alpha channel. Normally, by the way, I make these edits down here um, before I move it up here because I can keep a lot of data and like old versions of it if, in case I want to revert and stuff like that. Um, whereas if you're working up here, you're stuck with just one flat layer. If that makes sense. So anyway, I can make all these edits to the alpha channel. Like let's say, you know, I just really erase this down and it's all like 
So got some transparency going on. Remember, I'm actually painting transparency here. And this is the cool part of work, working with an image format that um, has supports alpha channels is that you can paint your transparency separate from painting your color. Now, one thing you don't want to do is like smudge areas like this, like and like actually shift around stuff that you've done before. You want to generally leave uh, the shapes matching up with your red, green, and blue channels, because if you shift the alpha off, then it'll feel strange, right? But like I said, this is nice because now, you know, I've got like transparent areas and brighter areas, but then the color consistency is is the same. It's not always like transparent areas are always going to be pink and opaque areas are always going to be teal. It kind of lets it play around a little bit, which adds some more depth and good stuff to it. So at any rate, that's how you prep your file for export to have a transparency or in the case of an additive texture type, you don't need transparency. And yeah, that's kind of your beginner's crash course to how to paint particle textures in Photoshop. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I hope you learned something.